All right, now I need to have a quick word about Hankel transforms. I hope everybody's having fun. Um, so in my experience, Hankel transforms is something that nobody learns about in school, even at good schools. Um, so I'll just introduce them to you. They're actually pretty easy to understand if you know what a Fourier transform or a Laplace transform is. Um, so, you know, what a transform does is it converts one function to a different function. That's literally all it does. And um, the way you choose a function, uh, a transform is um, an appropriate transform is, well, A, what does the domain match, but also does it, does the new function that I'm creating have nice properties to work with? And so um, it turns out that Hankel transforms are designed to work with functions that appear in cylindrical coordinates. So it's a little bit different than the other transforms, but qualitatively it's similar. Um, so by definition, what a Hankel transform is, is I take one function, a function that I'm calling g of r here, and I convert it into a different function, capital G of k, so it's a function of a different variable, by performing some strange integral. So in this case, the convenient integral turns out to involve an integral over the, um, the zeroth order Bessel function. So, um, you know, basically, if you just use this definition, it'll convert your function g of r into a function capital G of k. Um, now, it turns out that that particular setup is not chosen randomly. Um, it turns out that if it if you're trying to do a Fourier transform of two variables, but the but you know the but the function that you're trying to do the Fourier transform on is axisymmetric, so it's a function of r and not really x and y separately, then um, the definition that I've given you up there is exactly equivalent. Um, if you're curious about all this, you can go see it on um, like Wolfram. I think Wolfram's website talks about Hankel transforms and can explain why it has this definition. But the key thing is that it's related to Fourier, or it is, it is a Fourier transform. Um, it's just a Fourier, it's essentially like a simplification of a Fourier transform in cylindrical coordinates. Okay, why is that cool? Because then we get back all the properties of our Fourier transform. So it turns out that um, these things are one to one. So what that means is that if I know the Hankel transform of a function, then I can go backwards very easily using the definition of the inverse Hankel transform and get my original function. So in this case, in the Hankel transform, it actually turns out that the Hankel, the definition of the Hankel transform is exactly equivalent to the definition of the inverse Hankel transform. It's just that, I mean, the only difference is that the position of the functions has changed. So to go from real space to Hankel space, the, the real space one goes inside the integral. If you want to go in the opposite direction, it's the Hankel function that goes inside the integral. But there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. If I know one, I can find the other, and it turns out it's pretty easy. Um, the other important thing, and the thing that we're going to use, is that convolution is still easy. So remember, convolution... Uh, you know, convolution in real space corresponds to multiplying Fourier transforms in Fourier space. Same is true of Hankel transforms. Convolution of the real space functions um, corresponds to taking the inverse Hankel transform of the two Hankel transforms that you're trying to convolute. Um, so in other words, if I want to take, you know, if I have the convolution of a real space function P and G, um, and actually, this is going to come up exactly in TDTR because I want what I want this to be is our pump laser. So I have a Gaussian pump laser, and at every spot that that pump laser lands, it's going to generate a spatial temperature profile. So this G will be our point response function, um, and I will need to integrate or convolute that point response function over all of the different points where the pump laser lands, and. Um, what I'd like to do is, you know, rather than working in that really complicated looking space, but I'm not going to do the convolution in real space, I'm going to do the convolution in Hankel space. Because in Hankel space, a convolution is just P times G um, in, the Hankel, in the Hankel space. But if I want to go backwards and I want to get that convolution, all I need to do is take 
um, you know, you know, basically use the inverse Fourier transform of P times K, and that'll get me back this convolution. Um, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Henkel transforms are actually easier than Fourier transforms or Laplace transforms. It's just that nobody's heard of them. Um, so anyway, we're going to use that. 